Good morning. What a wonderful, beautiful day that the Lord has given us on today. I'm Pastor Leo, just so you know, but today it is, <laughs> I'm dressed as King Solomon. I, I did the best I could here uh, to be a king, uh, and, and it is going to be an exciting day. I have found so many different people that I did not recognize I hope you will find as well just beautiful costumes. I love how you have dressed out today to make this a great time. Some of you, I'm serious, I did not recognize you. It is good to have you all here. Choir, yes. It is going to be a fantastic Sunday. It's the 20th Sunday after Pentecost, and we still feel the power of God in our midst. Amen? So I want you to stand with me today as we... Praise the Lord our God for all that God has done.
so very much, Amen. Give God a good praise. Give God a good praise this morning. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Again, welcome to Bear Creek United Methodist Church. This is a safe, inclusive faith community that we are seeking and growing in Christ's love. We're so glad that all of you are with us today. If you notice, you already can see all of the uh, trunk or treat setups that we have. It's just a great day as we come to celebrate our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, and all that God has done in our lives. God, continue to empower us, and I pray that people have seen Jesus Christ in you all week long. Please register your attendance. Let us know that you're here. If you didn't register when you came in, register when you go out. Or you can have the Shelby app. Just pull it out, check in. Let us know that you are here. Also, if you are uh, listening or viewing online, please check in as well. Let us know that you are with us. Stay connected with us. We want to make sure that you stay connected. We want to know what's going on with you. So stay connected at bearcreekumc.org is our email address. Or you can text me. Text me at any time. There's something going on. If you need some help, let us know. It's 832-773-4901. We just want to make sure that everybody can connect. Amen? A lot of things going on, as you see. It's going to be a great day for us. We want all the kids to have a great time. There's going to be plenty of candy for everybody. There's going to be lots of fun. I want you to have a blast today. God has blessed us with this beautiful day, so let's make sure we celebrate and let everybody know that they are welcome here today. Let them feel the love of Christ on our campus. Also, we want to make sure you're here on next Sunday. We'll be celebrating those individuals that have gone before us. It's All Saints Sunday, and we want to make sure and give honor to those that have gone before us, those that have touched our lives as we celebrate on next Sunday. And then, of course, we look forward to some exciting Bible studies that's going on. Reverend Paula Baring has a setup there where you can sign in uh, after a service today. She's going to bring us a very special study on prayer. We've been talking about centering prayer. We've been talking about just staying before God. And she has something special she's going to do with the aromas that you, we talk about in the Bible as well. It's going to be an exciting time, so don't miss out. This is our last sermon on biblical characters just like me. I've enjoyed this series. Have you enjoyed the series on biblical characters just like me? Has that been good for you? Oh, it's been a blast. I am going to miss it. We'll have our last Wednesday night, Monday and Wednesday night uh, Bible study as well, our small group discussion, so don't miss out. Will you just stand, well, I put it like this, before you stand where you are, yeah, just stand where you are, because maybe there's somebody around you you don't recognize that you may have to introduce yourself to, but stand where you are, look around, see who you don't know, okay, and just uh, wave at him, give him an air hug or do something like that if you don't mind. It is so good to see everybody. I'm going to ask you to come join me. You, sir, you come here. <laughs> you may be seated in the house of the Lord once you get to know everybody. I got one guy here I want to introduce you uh, to. He wandered in here. Let's see who he is. There you go. I'm in costume. I don't have a costume. I didn't recognize you. No, just kidding. <laughs> This is Reverend Morris Mathis. He's from the conference office. Give him a warm welcome, if you don't mind. <laughs> Reverend Mathis is the director of the Center for Leadership Formation, and he has uh, been doing a great job uh, for us in this conference. We appreciate him so very much. I'd like for you to greet us, and then, if you don't mind, pray a special prayer over us. You can, you can do that. At the end of the service, he's going uh, to uh, do something special um, here as well. So, yeah, you can yeah, do that okay. as well. So, well, uh, good morning, everybody. It is uh, great to be here with you. Man, what a beautiful day uh, this is. And, uh, I, you know, walking in, y'all look fabulous. And uh, so, uh, so, wow. And I also have to say, I saw people in Astro uniforms. If... If any of those wearing Astro uniforms can hit, 
if they could go to Atlanta, yeah, that would be great because uh, anyway. So um, we, uh, yeah, we're putting together a video that we want to uh, put out for this Christmas to kind of encourage the conference. And uh, kind of the theme of it is uh, nothing's going to keep us down because it's been a little bit of a challenging year, hadn't it? And so the theme of it is nothing's going to keep us down. And so we're going to ask the children's choir to just uh, just sing a little snippet of a song we put together. So that's what we're going to do at the end of the service. And we're excited about it. We think it's we think it's going to be great. Yeah, we're going to invite all the children up at that time. It's just going to it's going to be fantastic to have us represent uh, the conference and encourage folks. So I'm excited about that. Thank so, you for anyway, that. It's great to be with you, and God bless you. Why don't you say a special prayer? Okay, yeah, I'll do that. that. Yeah, let's pray. God, we do give you thanks for this beautiful day, and we give you thanks for the privilege of gathering together as your people. I give you thanks, O oh God, for the ministry of Bear Creek, and ask that you would continue to, to just bless them and guide them and use them uh, to share the good news of the gospel with, with this mission field. And uh, God, we pray that in all things, uh, that we would just be faithful uh, yes. to you as individuals, uh, and be faithful to you as, as your people, the Church of Jesus Christ. So just be with us now, O oh God, as we share this time of worship together and do whatever it is you want to do in our lives as we yes. share this time. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good Thank luck. you so very much. I appreciate you. Come on, give them another hand. appreciate you coming. Thank you so very much, Mark. God is a good God. Amen. It's our time of giving on today. I tell you, Loopy was going to be dressed. Um, do y'all have y'all have y'all figured out? You got to do this, okay? <laughs> this is Guadalupe. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, Lady Guadalupe, how are you? Doing great. Thank you. Okay, yeah, I love this. As the mother of Jesus, you know, she, she can tell me, you know, you get straight, you know, you do this, you do that. <laughs> so that's why I do everything she says. <laughs> it's an awesome day. I, I want to I show you something. These are some of the pictures I took just this morning. See if you recognize any of these guys. Oh, wait a minute. This is Katie. Go back. That's Katie. So Katie is actually uh, Rex's granddaughter, and she is dressed as... A, a mean lunch lady. <laughs> is that, is that not, not, I love it. <laughs> yeah, keep showing her, that's, this is great. You recognize her, that's my assistant, right? Waldo, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, those guys are sharp, I love it. Keep going, I love it, yes. Oh, there's those guys that's traveling to Atlanta soon. Yeah, go ahead. Now, I just thought this guy just got so blessed and lucky to be with that beautiful woman. <laughs> Keep going. I love it. Yes. Now, that's the sweetest smelling skunk I've ever seen. Go ahead. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Looking good, Spider-Man. Go ahead. I love it. These guys are from straight from Nineveh. Oh, wow, that's my bodyguard and his wife. I love it. Thank you so very much. Give them a hand. They, they, I mean, everybody's doing so good. I love this. As we prepare our hearts for giving on today, think about how God has blessed us. You can never, ever give God back for all the joy that God brings to us, all the peace, all of this feeling that you get to know that you're not alone and that, that God is taking care of us. But as we give today... Think about all the ministries of the church. Think about all those things that's going on. You'll be getting a letter next week, and I kind of listed all of those things of what God is doing here at Bear Creek. It's going to be amazing for you to see. God has called us to make a difference, and I believe we're doing that. On the 14th of next month, mark your calendar, November 14th is our Commitment Sunday. We plan for the next year, and we know that God has greater things for us to do. And so, please, pray and ask God, what is it that you can estimate in your giving that you can pledge for next year? And let us 
continue to allow God to use us to make a difference here, not just today, but tomorrow and forever. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you so very much just for your love, that we can come here and know that we are loved by you. No judging, no condemning God, that you accept us who we are. We thank you for the ministry of Bear Creek, how you have blessed all of us, Lord Jesus, just to come together and just enjoy your presence. Help us as we worship you today that we give you everything, everything that we have, Father, and hold nothing back. Bless these offerings, Lord Jesus, as we give, whether electronically, in person, mailing it in. Bless it, Lord Jesus. Use it for your purpose and your purpose only, we pray in your son Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Remember, the Lord loves a cheerful giver, so as you give today, smile. I want to celebrate one more thing before, and that is Gene. Where are you, Gene? Gene, if you can stand with me, Gene. Gene joined, yeah, Gene. Gene, if you don't mind, Gene. Gene, boy, Gene joined the 90 Club this, this past month. He, he made 90 years Oh, we have about 12 folks that are in here that's over 90. Gene, we are so happy for you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you so very much.
please stand? Thank you, choir. Thank you so very much. Beautiful. Today's scripture reading is going to be from 1 Kings 3, verses 5 through 10. It's going to be from the Common English Bible. The Lord appeared to Solomon at Gibeon in a dream at night. God said, ask whatever you wish and I'll give it to you. Solomon responded, you showed so much kindness to, my, to your servant, my father David, when he walked before you in truth, righteousness, and with a heart true to you. You've kept this great loyalty and kindness for him and have now given him a son to sit on his throne. And now, Lord my God, you have made me your servant, king in my father David's place, but I am young and inexperienced. I know next to nothing, but I'm here, your servant, in the middle of the people you have chosen, a, a large population that can't be numbered or counted due to its vast size. Please give your servant a discerning mind in order to govern your people and to distinguish good from evil, because no one is able to govern this important people of yours without your help. It pleased the Lord that Solomon had made this request. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Thank you, Harold. I appreciate it so very much. I've enjoyed this sermon series and small group discussions entitled Biblical Characters Just Like Me. Today we explore the nature of the seven. Lupe and I are strong in the nature of the seven. Matter of fact, both of us, are, our core personality type is seven. Elizabeth Bennett, the author of a 60-day devotional, uh, Enneagram devotional, called The Enthusiast, Growing as an Enneagram Seven, says this, quote, that personality is a kind of shield that we pick up and hide behind. It is functional, even protective at times, but altogether unnecessary because God made us in his image from the start. It's a good time for us to remind ourselves that we are not a number. We are not our personality. Who we are is who we are in Christ. You and I are made by God, we have been chosen by God, and we are not what we've chosen to use as a coping or way of thriving in this world. The biblical character that type sevens most identify with in the Bible is King Solomon. According to the authors of biblical characters, just like Biblical characters and the Enneagram, sevens are outwardly perceived as busy as a way of avoiding any outward perceived confrontation. What we're trying to do is to protect our wounded, our inner wounds. The wounding message that sevens heard or thought they heard as children is it's not okay to depend on anyone for anything. It's not okay to depend on anyone for anything, or you may have heard, no one is going to take care of you. If you heard those things, then you may be a type seven, or you may be strong in the nature of the seven. Sevens feel that they must have some level of mastery over the things they pursue. They are determined to do it all without the help of anyone. And this leads to Solomon's prayer. Solomon was the son of King David and Bathsheba. In 1 Kings chapter 1 and verse 30, King David promises Bathsheba, quote, your son Solomon will certainly succeed me, he says. He will sit on the throne after me. I'll see that it happens today. When Solomon became king, he did not know exactly what to do next. But remember, 
Sevens are located in the thinking triad. They prefer to think. And so Solomon utilizes this thinking center and he reasoned to go to Mount Gibeon. And there he offered God these extravagant sacrifices. One can already see his excessive nature. The vice of the seven is gluttony. We want more of what we want more of. Sevens wrestle with this. But it becomes clearer later in Solomon's life that he really, really struggled with gluttony. The author of the Enneagram for Spiritual Transformation says, quote, that the intriguing thing to note about what God was doing is that God did not require Solomon to perform these sacrificial acts. It was actually Solomon's idea. The breakthrough for Solomon, as for most sevens, came not when he was awake. Not when he was awake, offering these sacrifices that he thought would be pleasing to God, but instead it came in the deep of sleep. I have found that happening a lot. The thinking and doing centers of the seven must be shut down. We know, right? We're thinking all the time, wanting to do all the time, and yet it must be shut down so that God could speak and the feeling center is engaged. It is the repressed center of the seven, the feeling center that actually permits the seven to dream. It's similar to John of the Cross and the dark night of the soul when God heals and restores our capacity to love. The seven needs their freedom to love others, to be healed and restored. In Solomon's dream, God asked King Solomon, what do you want? And he responds by asking God in 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 9, Please give your servant a discerning mind in order to govern your people and to distinguish good from evil. Because no one is able to govern this important people of yours without your help. Solomon needs God's help. Sevens, we need God's help. And he asked God for two things. First, make me wise. Make me wise. And secondly, teach me the difference between right and wrong. The authors of biblical characters and the Enneagram explain that with his preferred ways of knowing being shut off, closed off, Solomon is able to quickly access his feelings. And in accessing his feelings, you notice that his reply to God comes not from his head, but from his heart. From his heart. The significance of this insight is that sevens who often suppress our feelings frequently make life decisions without truly being in touch with our deepest desires. It is for that reason that many sevens struggle with addiction, anxiety, excessive outward behavior. The authors of the Enneagram Made Easy suggest that type seven people need to first become quieter and more introspective. I remember when Lupe first met me and then our first maybe our first year of marriage there she says you need to just go off and be quiet somewhere the hardest thing in our lives is to become quieter and more intro perspective I was afraid to be alone with me secondly is to place more value on wisdom than upon self-discipline and more 
and explore subjects in depth. I remember a friend telling me, you're too disciplined. <laughs> we need to have more value on the wisdom than on what we make ourselves do. And then number three, the third thing, is to become more serious and more accepting both of the good and the bad. Because remember, the number one thing we want is to be happy, and therefore we must shut away to bad. And the last thing, finally, is to get in touch with our fears. A good example of Solomon's wisdom we find in 1 Kings chapter 3. He's engaged these two women in a dispute over who was the actual mother of a child. Apparently, in the night, one mother accidentally rolled over and her baby died. When Solomon explores the matter, he discerns the truth by appealing to their feelings and requests for the child to be half by sword in order for both women to be happy with a portion. And that revealed the true mother. You see, it takes transformation for a seven to understand that feelings carry value and that they should not be neglected, numbed, or glossed over by excessive behavior. Sevens are particularly prone to excess in various areas and must move from their vice of gluttony to their virtue of sobriety. Think about these holy practices for the seven in you. I think all of us have some seven in us because we want to be happy no matter what. The first one is celebration. Today is a good day to practice it. The second one is communion, community. But let's look at celebration first of all. In the practice of celebration, which comes most natural for the seven, if you have that high capacity of seven, you really like celebrating. You should not feel any shame over finding ways to celebrate life to its fullest. To experience the abundant life that Jesus talks about in John chapter 10 and verse 10. We often feel alive when we're engaging with others through a variety of experiences. Some of us like laughing, we like feasting, we like listening uh, to music or watching movies or just doing all of these things, deep conversations, as long as we engage with others. These are to be entered into consciously, being consciously aware that God is present. My dad used to say, take the Lord everywhere that you go. You see, we must remember that true and lasting joy doesn't depend upon circumstances, but on the person and work of Jesus Christ. The second one is community. Again, that's why we enjoy getting together. We look forward to our weekly Sunday worship time. We look forward to mission opportunities or a meal with, with church members, any opportunity to grow in the body of Christ, to spend time with other believers where we can enjoy a sense of belonging, interdependency that comes just from being a part of God's family. The two upstream practices, these would be the challenge for the seven. Silence and solitude. Silence and solitude. Again, I go back to that time when Lupe tried to get me to just get away and how I struggled with that, just to be alone with God. And then, it was the year that my dad passed. 2014. I'd been practicing a little silence and solitude Every three months. Every three months then became every month. I would go to the Ruha Center 
the Villa de Mattel and spend a day from about 8 o'clock in the morning until about 3 o'clock in the afternoon just in silence. And then it became every Monday. Every Monday. And I remember that year that my dad passed. He passed in the summer, July. And that January, God started moving in my life in a way I'd never seen before in silence. It became the place that I found that I could be with my Heavenly Father. Solitude and silence allows you to feel what you've been trying to avoid. Those things beneath the surface and you meet God in your inner being like you never have been in the presence of God before. Even to the place of experiencing your emotional pain. Solitude releases you from your stage per persona. It releases you from performance, overly depending on others as you slow down and enjoy the gift, the greatest gift of all, and that is communion with God. Just you and God. The second one is fasting. This is also a struggle for a seven. Fasting helps us so that we will not become addicted or overly dependent on our experiences. Fasting from things, fasting from certain experiences, it is an awakening that we are truly hungry for the presence of God. There is nothing that will satisfy the seven like the presence of God. It's a pathway to indulging in God's love and God's grace. The seven, I encourage you to read John of the Cross. And I, I think it's really good for all of us. The Spanish phrase, duda o nada. All or nothing. Say it again for me, baby. Todo, todo, todo o nada. All or nothing. This is the seven. If you're unhealthy, you understand that because it's manic, right? It's all or nothing. But it's a good thing here because it's the theme that runs through John of the Cross works. To have all, he says, experience all and yet have nada, no thing. John of the Cross writes, quote, to reach satisfaction in all, desire its possession in nada, no thing. God is no thing. We have things that God has given us to enjoy. Don't let those things become your God because God is no thing. God is the creator of those things. The scripture for the seven that I give you today is Ecclesiastes. This is good for you to read at least once a year. Ecclesiastes, read the entire book. At least once a year is good, but if not, try this one chapter. First through the eighth verse, chapter three. There is a season for everything. There is a time for every matter under the heavens. A time for giving birth and a time for dying. A time for planting and a time for rooting up what was planted. A time for killing and a time for healing. A time for tearing down and a time for building up. A time for crying and a time for laughing. A time for mourning and a time for dancing. A time for throwing stones and a time for gathering stones. 
a time for embracing and a time for avoiding embraces, a time for searching and a time for losing, a time for keeping and a time for throwing away, a time for tearing, a time for repairing, a time for keeping silence, and a time for speaking, a time for loving, and a time for hating, a time for war, and a time for peace. A seven needs to hear, in all of those situations, God will take care of you. Please understand that transformation is not easy. It takes courage. It takes determination. And for some of us, we have to have the added help of a therapist or a spiritual director or a community of all three. Trusted friends makes all, make all the difference. I'm so enjoying my journey. I hope you are too. I hope you allow God to integrate every nature within you so no matter where you start you will find yourself a whole identity in Christ becoming an integrated person is what God wants for all of us living into my whole identity in Christ is my my prayer for all of you Sometimes you will feel that you are being driven by that one core compulsion. But let God use others to introduce you to other natures within you. Try not to push back. Integrate all that you are. Because by being without sin... Jesus, without compulsions, lived out all the qualities of his humanness. All of them. All the distinct qualities that's in each one of us. So that he may express his authentic self. Please accept that your whole identity in Christ is modeled in Jesus. Jesus is who we are becoming. I'm excited as we imitate Jesus Christ in our community so that others can see that there is healing, it is possible, and we can be our authentic self. Amen? Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you so very much. Thank you for loving us thank you for giving us the opportunity to welcome you into each of our lives so that we can live out who we are in Christ you are a good God and we love you so very much if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today if you have found yourself struggling with living out this identity that Christ has given you through the personality that you find yourself. Please allow Jesus Christ to come into your heart and then to not only grow you up, but to integrate all of these different natures so that you can be whole in Christ. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Father, come on, everyone, pray with me. Say, Father, thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross just for me. To get up on the third day, to ascend into heaven and make it possible so that I may have a whole identity. Jesus' name.
if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior and, and you prayed that prayer, believe me, God heard your prayer. I would like to introduce you more to what that relationship is like. Text me if you don't mind. If you don't have a church home, I would love to be your pastor. I'd love to be your pastor. This is a great place for you to grow in your relationship with God. Text me at 832-773-4901. If you just text, connect. If you have a special message, I look forward to talking to you. God is a good God. Amen. Will you stand with me? I'm going to ask all the children to come. Yeah, so all kids, no matter your age, go ahead and come on up. We're going to have you uh, right here on these steps. And Miss Susie, she's going to come forward. Uh, okay, I see her over there. And come she on, will guys. be leading us in some moves. So all kids, go ahead and come on up so we can sing together in fellowship and community this on this beautiful Harvest Sunday. Love these costumes. Just come right up here on these steps. As we sing this final song um, that really lines up well with Pastor Leo's sermon, let's think about the community that we have, uh, the community of music that we share, and the way that we worship. Um, and so all, all of us, let's go ahead and we're going to watch Miss Susie. She's going to lead us in some moves as we sing our final song today.
a seat. We're going to have a seat this morning. You may be seated. Give him a hand. Don't you love our little ones? I appreciate them so very much. Thank you so very much as well. Reverend Ron? Reverend Ron is dressed up as me today. Did you notice? I love it. Today we're going to uh, ask all the children and uh, parents, you can stick around if you want. We're going uh, to just stay right here after and of course they're going to do the recording for uh, the conference. Uh, I'm going to ask as we prepare our hearts for just a great time this afternoon, uh, Susie, the children's um, um, ministry and, and I mean the whole church, the United Methodist men, they've got uh, stuff, they've already cooked for you as well and they got lots of candy. It's just going to be a lot of fun today. Thank you all for your participation today. Choir, you look good. I love those hats. That's just perfect. That, that, was, that was perfect for today. Thank you very much. And Wes, I want to, yes, uh, Wes, I want to say thank you for, of course, Wes always gives us a great altar, doesn't he? Beautiful. Thank you so very much. Will you stand with me today? And like I said, you can stick around if you want as we record with the kids. But I'm going to ask, since Reverend Ron is looking like me, acting like me today, if he would actually give us our sending forth. As we go forth this week, I challenge you to do just one thing. Take five minutes each day of silence and solitude. And in that silence, contemplate your self-identity. And then think about what the world identifies you as. And then lastly, pray to God that he will discern for you your identity in Christ. Take five minutes each day, and we will draw closer to God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, go in peace. Thank you.